I am so excited to talk about our sponsor, Living Proof. Living Proof is a very different kind of hair brand. It is rooted in science. It started in their labs in Boston, Massachusetts. It was founded by a team of scientists and hair experts. And each product is scientifically engineered to solve the toughest hair problems, not conceal them. Their award-winning patented formulas bring out the best in your hair. I love it because it's not like a bandage. A lot of hair products I feel like I put on and I'm just sort of like hiding the problem and not fixing it. That's not the case with Living Proofs. First of all, their dry shampoo is the bomb. So many guests have told us they use it and there's a good reason. It doesn't leave a white cast on your hair. It doesn't feel grainy. It doesn't just hide the oil for a second. It like cleans your hair. Once you shake it in, your hair feels better and it lasts for more than just a couple hours that you would normally get out of a dry shampoo. You're gonna get like a day or two more of clean hair. I also love the five-in-one perfect hair day styler. Jess, have you ever tried that? Oh, it's such a goodie. Actually, you know what? People who have turned on to it, they like actually have been repeat buyers. They love it. The PhD. Because it just works. Yeah. You can put it in, you can air dry, you can blow dry, whatever you do. I feel like all hair types can benefit from that, but most of their products are formulated for your hair type. So go check out their website. You're definitely going to find a new winner. So put the science to work and unlock your hair's full potential. Visit livingproof.com slash fat mascara and use the code fat mascara to get 10% off your first purchase. That's livingproof.com slash fat mascara, code fat mascara for 10% off your first purchase. Livingproof.com slash fat mascara, code is fat mascara. Hello and welcome to Fat Mascara. I'm Jess. Hi, Jess. I'm Jen. Welcome to our beauty podcast, everyone. What's up? Lots to talk about. I swear this week has been just like, when you listen to this podcast, just know that Jess and I have recorded it over the course of, what is it now? Seven days? <laughs> it's it's so stupid. It's honestly like, it's too boring to if talk If I about. believed in astrology, I would say like some planet is in some position right now. <laughs> it's the dumbest thing. It's like, like for every minute that you listen to this podcast was like seven minutes of like, what? Tech problems. How does this work? <laughs> and beauty research, not just tech problems. Oh, That's God, right. No, Talking about just... lipstick and mascara every single freaking day this week. I hope you guys are having um, a lovely fall. We are talking about, oh, Jess is back with buckle fat. We taught, we, we teased it sounds this. like I'm talking like belt buckle fat. Buckle fat is like this fat in your cheek. I remember when we were looking up, we're like, is it buckle or buckle? But it's definitely buckle. That is the fat pads on your jawline because Chrissy Teigen brought that into the zeitgeist, I guess, when she had yes, that procedure you know, done. She's always putting something into the cultural conversation. That is the deepest and yet most correct statement I have ever heard about Chrissy Teigen. And you can yes, take, yes, yes, absolutely. She's just bringing things to the surface. And this week it was buckle fat. Yeah. I have to say, I don't know if people know Google this. Google search for buckle fat probably yeah, really I have, spiked. I have met her. I spent a day with her. I wrote a story about her. Yes. I will tell you this, that woman is honest. She's not putting on a show for you all. Like that is her thing. Like she is full honesty and say what you will, but I appreciate that she's open about things because it also lets people who have those same issues, you know... I think people like processing with her. You know what I mean? Yes. So if you have, if you are, (laughs) no, I just mean because you wouldn't even know about this procedure, I don't think, unless you heard Kirstie Teigen. It's not a very popular cosmetic procedure, but we'll talk about it. Well, well, we we as beauty insiders were aware of this procedure. Right. But even so, it's never like, some of our our listeners, I I want to defend our listeners, some of our listeners know about this procedure. So I don't want to, I don't want to be like Chrissy Teigen brought buckle fat to <laughs> the, you know, the globe. Yeah. No. But, but she definitely brings things to a wider audience and then they become kind of um, just by nature of who she is, like hot topics. Yeah. I was thinking and people about have hot takes at the end of the year, you know, like the American Society of Plastic Surgeons always puts out like the top five yeah. procedures of the years. I'll just say this. I've never seen the buckle fat removal on the top five procedures. That's what I was kind of saying. No, about, it's like, a, yeah, you're no, it's definitely a niche procedure. And and yes, people definitely relate to her, if that's what you were saying. She gives them permission to talk about things that are um, difficult, uh, certainly as of late. Yeah, yeah. So we'll talk about life, that. Before yeah. that, the news, obviously, which also had some cosmetic procedures we'll be talking about. And then a raise a wand, of course. 
And that'll be the show. Are you ready to do it? Let's do it. Okay. Okay, thoughts and opinions on that music? <laughs> At first, I thought I'd stumbled into the wrong show. Um, what show were we on? It reminded me of like something with red velvet. Oh. And maybe a, um, a long glove. A sequined red carpet fashion, like... Joan Rivers moment, maybe? No, I wasn't thinking Joan Rivers or comedy. I thought this was like more like a... <laughs> Very dramatic Oscars like, presentation. I was thinking more of like a, a weird erotica, like... Oh, no! <laughs> like burlesque moment. Okay, like, maybe I feel this like an odd, one. An odd one. Okay. An odd one. <laughs> Didn't feel newsy at all? <laughs> no, no. I thought like like strange college student burlesque moment. And they had to buy like the cheap sound effects. Yes. Online. yes okay. Yes. Well, I think that might not be our new news segment music intro, everyone. I was just like looking around trying to catch someone's eye. And the I was trying to think outside the box. I was so busy searching for news music. Oh, you so were outside the box, baby. You were no, outside. No, I was still. It was still in a like what is thought of as a newsy intro moment, but perhaps for the wrong show. Okay. Well, for our beauty news. <laughs> We'll probably be going with one of the other two music segments we played in the last two weeks for you, clearly. <sighs> All right. I'm just going to start. Points for uh, trying. Points thank for you, trying. Thank you. Really, I do my best. <laughs> so I don't have a lot of editorializing on this one, but there's another celebrity beauty line. It's from Doja Cat. She teamed up with BH Cosmetics. I will give you my positives. It's affordable. <laughs> it's affordable. You know? Uh, the lip gloss is uh, $12. There's an eyeliner for $11. I didn't see anything really novel. Like, I swear they just make this all at the same factory and they just put on a different foil logo stamp on the top. No offense, Doja. Do you call her Doja? <laughs> Miss Cat? I'm not sure. <laughs> I think your music is awesome. I, like I partied to it this weekend, actually. Jen partying to Doja Cat wasn't on the party. weekend. It was like a backyard Brooklyn s'mores moment with Doja Cat in the background. <laughs> we did one of those Spotify like beta sessions where everybody at the party can like put a song on, like a like an old school jukebox. Okay, okay. And I was like, okay, Doja Cat, who was bringing that out? And my friend Lou was, so I was, I was, that's Doja. She was part of my weekend. Anyway, your music's, your music's great. Your makeup, it's lovely. I hope you do well, truly. <laughs> um, okay, if you're a gamer, this might not be news to you, but did you know there's a Japanese company called Primaniacs that develops real life perfumes inspired by video games and video game characters? They just announced that they are creating six new perfumes based on the characters in the popular show Genshin Impact. So they'll be available in December. I don't know, people into gaming is like a big, a big like community that loves this show. They'll be able to have six new perfumes. There are also, I looked into this because I was like, oh, that seems new. It's not. Resident Evil has a perfume. Mario has a perfume. Call of Duty had fragrances at one point. Did you ever wow. hear about those? No, but I am looking into gaming couches. Because I can't find a couch with a high back. Oh my God. This is this literally came up this week with me and Eric because he's six. You want a gaming couch too? I didn't know gaming couches had high backs, but like every time he sits down on our couch, he goes and gets a pillow from our bedroom and puts it behind his head because his head's too high up. Like mine like still fits on the couch, but his is like floating up in the air. Yours fits on the couch? Because well, it like slumped I, down. Sl that's ex to my point, slumped down. They don't make couches where you can rest your head. So I, I, I Googled like couch with like high back. And gaming and, couches. And the only up. thing that was coming up were like, you know, vintage couches. Right. Or gaming couches. And I have to tell you, they're not aesthetically pleasing, but they look you like think? the most comfortable things in the world. Oh, I'm sure. So, I so Jeff was like, if that's what you really want... I don't think I really want one, but they look freaking Oh, I thought this was going to be, Jeff was like, let's go with the gaming couch. Oh, hell no. He's like, he was laughing at me. He was like, give but, me the low profile West Elm mid-century yeah. modern vibes. Yes, exactly. That's totally Jeff. his yeah, style. Yeah. <laughs> but I was looking at these things. They look like lumpy dumpty, but they look like I could just like, you know, 
like like crawl into one yes. and die. They're look, they're so comfortable. But guys, Google if you don't. I mean, you guys might probably already know. Are there speakers couch. built in right near your ears, Jess? Cup probably. holders, <laughs> like everything. <laughs> They make some nice models that are even like, you know, flippity flop, like, you know, for the kids, like $200. And then they make ones that are like, you know, $7,000 for like the whole fam. Please don't spend $7,000 on a gaming couch. I'm not, I don't no. know how long that's going to last that you no, like but, that gaming couch. But ga- the gaming culture is so fascinating to me. Anyway, back to back to the news. But the Sorry. perfume, so you get the couch and I will spray you in the Genshin um, <laughs> Impact fragrances, all six of them. A licensing wow. deal I'm much more into. I'm not a gamer, but I just wanted to bring, put it out there because I thought it was no? an inter- No, I thought it was like an interesting way that the beauty community just is getting into all the other fandoms out there. You know what I am a fan of? Sour candy. You know this yes, about me. Yes, yes, yeah, yeah, you like candy. I am a connoisseur. My, be- my best friend Jess and I are going to go to the Haribo-, Haribo factory in Germany. Next time I'm visiting my stepson, I'll be able to speak to them by then, one hopes. And we are going to visit Haribo. I love Sour Patch. I love the Sour Bears. I love it all. Sour Patch Kids has a licensing deal with a makeup company, Morphe, of course. <gasps> cool. Jess, what would you think Sour Patch Kids would do with a makeup company? What product would you expect to see? That's a good question. I mean, I would say like a palette. Really? For Sour Patch Kids? Okay, well, you're, oh, you get a, a lip gloss? No, lip, no, something Thank lip. Thank you. Like, lip yeah. balms and lip glosses. I was just thinking sour... color. I was thinking color. Like something of course, they do have an eye color. palette. But I was expecting like, I'm going to get like the blue raspberry lip balm. I want a little watermelon lip balm. Like all the flavors with a nice citric acid ting, some sweetness. Barely any lip products. There's one lip gloss, but you know what there is? A setting spray. That's the first product I saw and it weirded me out because I was like, I don't want to think about, like Sour Patch Kids already make my fingers sticky. I don't know that that equates with a setting spray for me. You don't want to think of tacky. Yeah. There's also little sponges, like makeup sponges that kind of don't really look like Sour Patch Kids. They look like just like colored sponges. It's an interesting licensing deal. I'm going to go out on a limb here and say it was a little bit of a miss not to do flavored lip balms. Yeah, yeah. Bonnie Bell's got like the market on that. But oh, yeah. Oh, Jess, maybe they have a limited licensing deal just for lip balms with another company, so Morphe couldn't do the lip balms. Maybe you just had the answer. Maybe I, don't, I was just thinking. I was just you know dreaming. Mm. Pay her the big bucks, guys. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, moving what else you on. A little bit of sad news to share about a former guest on the show. Uh, This has been all over the beauty community. So many people doing hot takes on this as well. Last week, Linda Evangelista revealed that after she got cool sculpting, a procedure that destroys fat cells, she developed disfiguring masses. So if you're not familiar with cool sculpting, I'm sure, we've actually talked about this, I'm sure, on the show. And we've had on plastic surgeons that have talked about it. Basically, the device has these little paddles. I've actually had it done on me for like five seconds just to see what it felt like at, one, at an event at one point. And it sucks in like a vacuum, the skin, and then the cold is applied to that. And the fat cells freeze and die. Your skin doesn't freeze on top, just the fat cells. They're very sensitive to cold. And then over the course of three to five months, your body metabolizes the, I'll just call them dead fat cells, and they disappear. So you can lose a tiny bit of fat this way. Well, after she got this, she developed PAH or paradoxical adipose hyperplasia. It's basically like these lumps that form afterwards with some more fat cells sometimes, so like more fat cells grew, but um, scar tissue in them as well. And they can and be very difficult to get rid of. So I was reading a bunch of studies about doctors who have tried to get rid of them after the fact. And sometimes you need liposuction, but sometimes that doesn't work. Well, the lawsuit, lawsuit is talking about how... Um, In the research, one in 20,000 people is supposed to be at a chance to develop PAH. But if you look into it, it seems to be much, much more common. In fact, one study done this year in Canada show it could be as common as one in 666 people develop this. So Linda's lawyers were talking about how not only was she not made aware that this was a complication that isn't as rare as one might think. The company didn't even have that in its marketing materials or on its website till well after she got the procedure herself. Um, And she says it's been horrible physically as well as emotionally. Her suit is seeking, excuse me, $50 million in damages for her distress and loss of work. At first I was like, okay, they're trying to make a point. You know, when you make a lawsuit and they do like this huge number just to get a lot of press for it. Mm -hmm. But then I was thinking, you know, she was one of the biggest models ever. If she had been working this past five years with like some really great deals, a la Cindy Crawford or something like that. I mean, 
I don't know that she would make $50 million, but she is the kind of person that would make millions of dollars from her appearance, whereas you and I get $0 because of how we look. Do you know what I mean? Like maybe I couldn't, (laughs) if I couldn't go to work, you know, for a year, I might lose my year's salary and then some money for distress. If she doesn't go to work for a year because of how she looks, she would lose millions. Do you understand what I'm saying? So it's maybe not- Way to put it into perspective, Jen. Well, I wanted to like really think about like, all right, now you're making everybody like feel weird with this $50 million number. But the thing online is that like people were coming at her for getting this like- procedure that was a choice and now complaining about it. Just because a procedure is a choice doesn't mean that it shouldn't be safe and you should be aware of the risks. It's like, we're going to judge her duly. Like you already, you're going to judge someone for aging and maybe gaining a little weight. Then they try and take care of it and under their control. And now we're judging them for trying to take care of it. Yeah. The, 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 sorry, I'm yelling. No, the hot takes were like, wow, we really hate women, don't we? <laughs> this culture, really, it's like... <laughs> I really, really felt like that. I There's um, a writer I like, Jolene Edgar. She posts on Instagram a lot and she does a lot of writing like for like new beauty. She used to write for Allure. And mm-hmm. she had my take personally, which is the opposite of that, which is like, we can't now judge people for the choices they make. Like you can judge the lawsuit all you want and maybe the number's ridiculous, but like... You do plenty of, like, I just had my neuroma foot surgery. That was a choice. I didn't need it. I'm fine without it. But if there had been a complication, no one was going to judge me for it. But because it was based on her appearance, people were judging her, I think. Yeah, I think people felt like, well, you know, why why should we have sympathy? You know, and she got cosmetic surgery. I think there, you know, there was just not a lot of, um, not a lot of kindness yeah. thrown her way. <sighs> There, there was a lot to unpack there. You know, this is our news segment. I think there's a lot that we can talk about in a, in a in about how segment. we judge people for making aesthetic choices, for sure. You yeah. know, if sympathy is what I think we needed more of, do you know what? We'll give that to you. This new show that I wanted to talk about too that I just watched. It's on TLC. It's called Doctor Mercy. She's a dermatologist in Chicago. And I was like, oh, it's going to be like a Dr. Pimple Popper kind of show. No, it's about medical dermatology. Um, It follows a Chicago dermatologist. Her name is Mercy Odiungbo, and she's the founder of Lily Aesthetics. It's a fascinating look at the medical profession. And if you're into like dermatology and the medical profession, this is like one of those surgery shows. This is not for the faint of heart. But my heart was breaking for some of the patients in the first episode because these are people who have quote unquote cosmetic issues, but things like neurofibromatosis, which is like where you develop these bumps all over your body, things that aren't just like, like we can never judge what an aesthetic choice that another person makes. It's like Dr. Heather Widows told us, like you can't, you don't get to say that Linda Evangelista's little bit of fat is not as devastating to her as somebody else's like moles all over their body. You know what I mean? Like each person is unique with how they are affected by their appearance. And I think if you're not agreeing with me, watch an episode of the show and you absolutely will. And they're actually streaming it online. So I'm going to put a link so you don't even need to like figure out your television, all the apps and find the channel. And I believe it's internationally available as well. All right. I'm going to hop down off my soapbox and bring us to the corner where everything is safe. Guess what we're talking about in Science Corner today, Jess? Just like, I'm just like pick an aesthetic choice that someone might make. Okay. What are we, what are we delving into? Beards. Okay. Okay. (laughs) Let's go there. Um, This isn't exactly brand new news, but I've heard about it because every year they do this thing called the Ig Nobel Prize, which is like a satirical Nobel Prize in science that they give out to research that you might think, why the hell did they do this research study? Which I feel like often when I bring you into Science Corner, you're like, how did they decide to study that? So the Ig Nobel Prizes award research like that. Well, this year, the one of the one of the studies that won the Ig Nobel Prize, I thought was super interesting. University of Utah scientists were honored for testing the hypothesis that humans evolved beards to protect themselves from punches to the face. Their research was published in Organismal Biology Journal. I don't know if that's how you say that. Um, But good news for those with full facial hair. The study indeed found out that if you have a beard and you get punched in the face, it hurts less. You get less damage done. And the reason they even thought about this was like, okay, picture a male lion. You know how they have manes? It's not just to attract a mate. 
And they're not even sure if that's what it helps with. But when they're fighting with other lions and they get scratched or clawed or a bit, they have this thick fur and matted hair that helps protect their most vulnerable region, which is their neck and their face. So they were like, oh, is this apply to humans? Maybe human men. Like, why would human men have developed this ability to grow hair on their faces like that, but not people who are women, who, you know, identify as women? And so the real reason is not because it's attractive, they think. It's because it protects them. So, it's so like, it's so like, like, test, like hetero testosterone, like... <laughs> Like it's so, I think it that's why like it so, won the Ig Nobel Prize because I'm sure they were like, cool, it's so great. Like alpha male. You Thanks know what I mean? for spending half a year studying that. What does that get us? You know? I'm going to grow a big beard to like, you know, show everyone that they can't, you know, scratch me. So that if you get in a fight, yeah, you will okay. not get as hurt. Okay. All right. But I also think about, um, this has happened multiple times with my friends and their partners where the where the guy like will grow out a beard and then there's always like a discussion in the couple, like, do we like the beard? Do we not like the beard? So if you're out there and you're part of like a couple with a beard or you have a beard yourself and you want to defend it as not just an aesthetic choice, you go ahead and tell them that if you were to get in a fight, you would be safer. Can you imagine if the like a woman got bangs and then like it was like the the, the couple was like, do we like the bangs? Do we not like the bangs? I feel like that would not fly as much. <laughs> and you could be like, well, the bangs are here to protect my forehead. Oh my God. I mean, I've grown bangs when I had really, like when I had pimples, like they do cover acne. That's a good thing. I don't know. Okay, there's, don't, nobody study that. Nobody needs to study that. I feel like they the whole cause acne. Is. I don't know if it needed a study, but um, I'll put a link to the Ig Nobel Prizes so you can see what other things are being studied. I'm sure there's a necessity to it at some level, but I think the the joke is that we're not sure if the study needed to happen, but now you know about beards. So there you go. That is the news. I hope you learned something. Hey, everyone. We are so excited to talk to you about one of our favorite places to shop for beauty, Ulta Beauty at Ulta Beauty. Yes. The possibilities are beautiful. Okay, so Ulta Beauty is on a mission to evolve the skincare category, and this is how they're doing it. They're there to inspire you on your skincare journey, and aren't we all on a skincare journey? I feel like that is what this show is kind of about. (laughs) That is like the B-plot of this show, really. I mean, we are both on a skincare journey every single week, and what I love about Ulta Beauty is they're there to inspire you, not criticize you. Yes, that's the best part about going into to an Ulta Beauty store, they meet you where you are. Like, I'll go in, sneak the mask down a little, show them what's going on. They're not going to tell me what my problem is. They want to hear what I have to talk about. So I went in for the dry skin issue. I know we've been talking about this all winter. I Mm -hmm. still have dry skin. And the product I've been using, it's a Strivectin Barrier Repair Cream. I get it at Ulta Beauty. It's finally really helping. But they're always really nice about, like, showing you how different products from different brands work together. And that's why I really enjoy shopping at Ulta Beauty. Love Ulta Beauty. So shop skincare at Ulta Beauty now. You can have a great experience just like we do. Ulta Beauty, the possibilities are beautiful. Hey guys, we have a new sponsor, Ren. We have been fans of Ren for a while now, and they have a great new product. It is their bioretinoid serum. Now, this is a natural bioretinoid, and it is a new addition to their bioretinoid collection, which includes a bioretinoid cream and an oil. And this range reduces the appearance of wrinkles, of age spots, and it leaves your skin looking visibly younger, smoother, and brighter. Can I just say, I'm so excited to have this brand on board. First of all, because of their packaging. They have zero waste packaging. There's a glass bottle, and then the pump is really hard to do sustainably, but they have a 50% recycled plastic pump. Then the formula itself, as Jess said, is a bioretinoid. But what this is going to do is help with skin texture, with evenness. And the thing about retinoids is we always say it takes a while for them to get started working. This one works in as little as seven days. That is kind of unheard of. You put on this serum and in about a week, you're going to see results. Did we mention the results? This improves rough skin, elasticity, and firmness. If you're nervous about trying a retinoid, this is a bioretinoid, so that's really sustainable and gentle for your skin too. So where does one find a product like this? You're gonna wanna head to Sephora and check out the new Ren Clean Skin Care Bioretinoid Youth Serum. Again, it's at your local Sephora or you can go to sephora.com.
Okay, let's talk about, we're doing a lot of aesthetics this episode. But on that note, I was thinking more about the conversation we were having about Linda. And, Mm -hmm. you know, she has, my sympathy is for sure, but I just, something in the conversation that I feel like we didn't touch upon is a lot of the reaction that I saw on Twitter and, you know, Instagram and and heard even my in my own orbit was a reaction to some of the language that she used in her Instagram post. Um, you can go to her Instagram post to read it, but she said she was, quote, permanently deformed and close quote. And I think that language was triggering for some people because that is very powerful language. And I think a lot of people have a different definition of deformed. I haven't I don't I don't know what she looks like right now. Yeah. When we interviewed her, it was, you know, several years ago. You know, I <laughs> didn't do an, oh, I an examination. About that. Yeah, that was in you know <laughs> twenty six it would have been after this happened. But I mean, yeah, this is a body procedure. So Yeah, and and, and yeah, we we don't know what she looks like and, and who are we to kind of qualify what that means. But obviously the word deformed has very strong connotations. So um, I think that's what sparked a lot of the reaction. So I just felt like we needed to touch upon that. Yeah, why there was about, yeah, it wasn't just yeah. to the whole lawsuit and all that. It was the words she was using. And, yeah, which and, we've and talked the tie about between so vanity. Many to- times yeah. about how like words do matter because that's, it's not just the actions. It's the, yeah, the way you talk about them. And I, and I think, listen, in conversation, if you're talking to somebody and your friends, I think they don't matter as much as they do when you put out. I think in conversation, they don't have the same weight as when people put out statements on Instagram. And this is a whole new world that people, particularly, you know, people of note are navigating. You're right. Because it's not in passing on ETV really quickly. We can all go back and stare at that post and really pick it apart. That's a very good point. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> so it's... Um, like you're putting out your own press release in a way with each of these little statements on Instagram, whether it's Linda or any celebrity talking about, you know, their cosmetic procedures. Yeah, or whether it's an apology or, uh, you know, this is how I feel about this political movement or it, it, everything is kind of like put through a meat grinder and a microscope analyzed. And um, I think that was just a part of the a, an angle that I wanted to talk about there. But um, again, it's, uh, I just want to share that I, I feel very sorry for what happened. It's not um, an editorial comment. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so let's talk about another <laughs> procedure. Yes. So this one and is another far celebrity. More, yeah, it's a far more niche. Sorry, far more niche than cool sculpting. This is the buckle fat procedure. And as we talked about at the top of the show, Chrissy Teigen had this done and she was very transparent about getting it done. She put the Instagram up, you know, like I was saying in the news section, saying, you know, like there was like no shame in her, you know, Dr. Diamond game. But what is the buckle fat procedure? And by the way, the news section was from last week. Sorry, I'm getting all my weeks messed up because... Bleh. Um, <laughs> <laughs> what is God, it, like, Jess? What is what it? What year is it? Is it 2020 or 2020? Am I in 2019? I don't even know. So buckle fat is when, and I talked to, you know, my buddy, Dr. Paul Jared Frank about this, because I knew he was just going to like break it down for me, you know, real, like in like layman's terms. It's the fat pad that lies between the muscles in your cheek. Some people have bigger ones. Some people have smaller ones. And obviously you're going to have a different face shape, you know, for many factors. But if you have bigger ones, you may have like a rounder face, you know, smaller ones, like a more slender face. Now, for people who want to slim their face and take away that roundness, it can be a very simple and effective procedure. But he said, this isn't, he wasn't like, this is a bad procedure or this is a good procedure. He said, like all things, like all cosmetic procedures, it's about candidate selection. Is it right for you? Now, as you get older, and I can speak on this <laughs> firsthand. Please, please tell now, everyone not, what you thought your face looks like, because I agree mine looks the same as I get older. You're, you're saying yours looks the same? A peanut. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I I have gotten, if you guys, okay, I might put this on our like Instagram, okay? 
I, I don't know. I don't want to like, I don't want to deal with like the whole, all the comments. I don't know. I might put this on our Instagram story. <laughs> Facebook group. I mean, you're not, you know, we don't have as many followers yeah, as Chrissy not, Teigen, not Chrissy so I think Teigen. you're going to be fine. <laughs> I know, but, I, but I'm not judging the procedure, but I just want to underscore Dr. Frank's point. For many people, your face shape is going to change. And by change, he didn't use this word. I'll use it. Deflate. Like yes, a, yes. Okay. It, I mean, that's you're taking away fat from your cheeks. Yes. So when I was in, and this is a, like, this relates, this relates, but hang with me. For my birthday, okay, it was just my birthday in September. And Jen, you wrote a beautiful note for this. Jeff collected notes and pictures from like all my friends, like close friends. And, you know, he's like, <laughs> he's putting them in like a book, but like, you know, anyway, we're looking through all the notes and pictures. I saw the, all of these incredible photos from like when I was in like college and like when I, you know, just moved to the city. My face was huge. And I remember thinking I didn't look like, you know, I wanted to look more kind of like like a more angular face. Like I thought I looked kind of like like a, I felt like I had like a big dumb face. I thought I looked like a big baby, you know? Yeah, yeah. And I had no cheekbones. Or a thumb, as Christopher. A thumb, <laughs> yeah. You didn't I look just, like a thumb. I just wanted to bring that up because it always makes it, you laugh. It's so funny. And then I remember when I was younger, I was like, I have a fat face. My mom's like, you're going to want that when you're younger, when you're older. Mothers, they are, yeah. they are wise. <laughs> yeah, she's like, she goes, your face is going to slim out and you're going to wish you had it. Well, that is literally what Dr. Frank said. He said, I tell everyone he goes you're going to spend the rest of your life wishing like you looked before the surgery okay oh with this particular procedure yes, yeah once and you he, get older and the fat is going every like dropping down it's not going yeah. over it's leaving your face and going <laughs> down <laughs> stairs he said yeah he said less than 50 he recommends this like he kind of co-signs on this procedure yeah for fewer than um, less or fewer got to get my grammar right um i'm going to say less than 50% of people who want it and that's just people who want it, who already think that they have full cheeks. So this isn't in the whole entire population. It's probably like 2% of people that might be a good candidate for this. Yeah, he like he really, it's not, he's not a huge fan of this procedure. And he actually, he doesn't do it. He um, refers them out. Like he's not, you know, it's not that he thinks it's a bad procedure, but he's like, I'm, this isn't his thing. Even the, yeah, under the, the under eye fat pads, a lot of um, surgeons and dermatologists are, are nervous to remove as well for the same reasons mm -hmm. you just said, which is like, yeah, maybe then you won't have a saggy under eye area, but later on, you're going to wish you had that fullness. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So I, I, you know, again, I, I, I like that he's saying it's not a bad procedure. It's about candidate selection, but it sounds like there are very few candidates. And another thing to remember is as your weight fluctuates, your face shape changes. As somebody whose weight has fluctuated, and I've talked about this on the show, like 40 pounds, my face has gone from, you know, quite large and full. And I think like quite nice looking to right now, I think I, my face could use a couple LBs, okay? That's why you I said you look skeleton. like a peanut. I could not stop laughing because I know that like when your temples, I know that what you're talking about because yeah, I have I've a, got a longer peanut face. Head. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I'm you don't have say, a peanut head, but yeah. <laughs> I'm going to say one more thing about this. I am very, and listen, if this, if you want the buckle fat procedure, if you think it's right for you, and I've got no comment on Chrissy Teigen, you know, she does, you do what you want, Chrissy Teigen. Um, you, you go, girl. You're always going to be beautiful, okay? But if you think that you want this, I just really hope that it's not because of like you feel this way this year or you think this is like a trend or something like that. Because mm. I think about all the gem, think about your career and all of the models that were like hot that season. And then the model who was like hot the next season. Not that you're trying to look like a model, but I think of somebody like Gigi Hadid has this really beautiful kind of full, like, you know, almost kind of heart-shaped face. But then a few years before, or maybe like a decade before, it was somebody like, you know, maybe almost like 15 years before, like Daria Werbery, who was super I angular. I have heard that name in a long time. Yeah. But super, you know, but I, th I remember being like, oh my God, she's so angular. And like, and I felt there and I got with my big doe face. And I was just like, right, I am like brow, such a schlump. Like you're like the, the trendy brow of the moment. And like, if that's not your brow shape, yeah, these things are trend. Face shapes probably are as trendy face as brows, are trendy. really. It's, like, and, and that heart-shaped face, I've heard this more as Instagram comes in too. There's this like, 
felineification of faces. It's like all of the human faces put together and roboticized a little, very slim jaw, like, you know, like chiseled cheekbones. Yeah, there is a trendy face shape right now, but with really full lips, it's like impossible to achieve. Completely. And it's, it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's because of filters. It's because of all the media that we see. It's because of like, you know, what models are trending. And I know we don't go around saying she's out of style. She's got an oval face, like get out of here. But like, it's just what our eyes become used to seeing as what's beautiful. And I really hope that somebody who has a fuller face shape isn't thinking, you know, I don't look good because then, you know what, in 10 years, everyone might want what you have. Yeah. So, And even if he or she thinks, no, you, Jess, Jen, you don't understand. I look in the mirror for the last 20 years and I haven't liked how full my cheeks are. I don't compare myself to supermodels. It's weird because even if you don't compare yourself, which I don't do, these images that you see all the time because you're watching television or you're on your phone, they soak into your like, your subconscious. So even if you don't think you're being influenced by the beauty aesthetic out there, you kind of are. So I think what you're saying is like, just yeah. take that factor into it. But you know me, I'm the first person to be like, if you want to have a cosmetic procedure because it makes you feel good, do it. But um, it's interesting to hear that even dermatologists are like, this one is a little bit special. It's like a really, let's give this an extra think is what I is what yeah. it sounds like. Yeah, definitely an extra think. And I, I, I get scared about the idea of if you really regret it, and then what are you going to spend your life this like? This isn't very... With putting filler back in, right? Yeah. Like you just and, spent that money and now you're going to spend more money to reverse it. And that's yeah. not... It never quite looks... This, doing something to your face and then... Uh, and, uh, we need to come up with like a bumper sticker of like the thoughts you need to have before you choose to have aesthetic procedures. Like I should just come up with like, I don't know. Like the 10, the ten questions yes. you need. Yes. Ask yourself this. And good doctors, by the way, will ask you those questions, yeah. but thanks for sharing. I actually always thought it was on your jawline. I didn't realize it was between the cheek muscles. That's good to know too. Buckle fat, huh? Buckle fat. Buckle fat, who knew? Buckle fat. Okay, this I feel like a theme came out in this whole episode and um, I kind of like that as a magazine editor. So we've, we're keeping the theme going here. Let's raise a wand. Let's talk to our listener. Who do we have? We have Kelly from Ohio. Kelly, take it away. Hi, this is Kelly Stitzel from Cincinnati, Ohio. And I just wanted to call with a raise a wand uh, for a candle brand. Uh, just listened to the episode where you were talking about fall candles and had to um, throw in a recommendation for an entire brand. It's Harlem Candle Company. And I am huge fan of their, their candles. I have almost every scent, I think. I've tried them all. They, they just, they have a really great throw. They burn cleanly and evenly. So there's no tunneling. Uh, some of my favorite scents, particularly going into fall and winter, are their speakeasy scent, which is a bourbon and Palo Santo. Um, it's kind of a smoky tobacco-y kind of scent. It's beautiful. I really love their brownstone candle, which is cardamom and sandalwood. It's great for this time of year. They're just such a great candle company. They have great customer service. They're really quick to get your stuff out uh, when you order. And um, I just wanted to shout them out as being one of the best candle companies out there. Thanks. Oh my God, Kelly, I actually have a Harlem Candle Co. Candle, Harlem Candle Co. Candle. And it's fantastic. You, I oh, really you like it. Good sign. Yeah, cosine, cosine. Love that. Do you want to raise a wand? You want me to raise my wand? Why don't you raise a wand first? Okay. I want to talk about my inner brows, the area of my brow closer to my nose. If I put my normal pencil here, I look like Eddie Munster. I don't know. Frida Kahlo yeah, on Eddie, a very yeah, bad day. Yeah. Like it gets too heavy in the center of my face. Oh, not good, not good. Yeah, but I still want to fill in there because my brows have gotten you know further apart with age. So I went back to Glossier Brow Flick. The brow pens have always uh, been harder for me to use. I just find a pencil easier because you can blend it more. The pen feels very permanent when you write it onto your face. Do you know what I mean? Like it's not as blendy. 
Yeah. But the brow flick is not like that because the color is not solid markery kind of color. It's like a watered down topish brown, the shade that I use. So, and you just literally like flick it on, like sketch, sketch, sketch. And it ends up looking more natural for me in the center area of my brow than I think a pencil would that lays down a wash of color on the skin. This is still just like little lines. So almost like sketching in the hairs. And I know that sounds like a lot of work, but it really didn't take that much work. So like, huh. I remember when this product came out and I was like, who needs that? Guess who does? Jen Sullivan needs it. So Glossier this Brow gal. Flick. This gal right here. Raisin Wand to Glossier Brow Flick. Nice. So I want to talk about a really nice nighttime product if you're in the mood for something truly luxurious. Okay, if you're in the mood to treat yourself. There's this brand and I've only after knowing about it for like over 10 years, I'm starting to understand how to pronounce it. Amoravicha. Oh, is it like the Eastern European brand with an O? That's not yes, how girl. I pronounce it. Okay, say it again. Amoravicha. I did not know. Okay, go on. I know somebody said it to me. I was like, I don't know that brand. I don't know that brand. Uh, and they sent me an email. Yeah. And I was yeah. like, oh, I've written about them 45 times. Yeah. Okay. It's Amoravicha Budapest. First of all, the founder is wonderful. The products are are, you know, when you think of a luxury product, which by the way, like I think, you know, I really, I, I, I really use products across the board from, you know, CVS to Last the week you did stuff. Neutrogena Rapid Clear. So you are allowed. You're a high, low kind of girl. Oh, very high, low. Oh, there's another one that I used the other day that I saved for our, our, our budget friendly picks. But sometimes when you use like a really luxury product, you're like, oh my God, I could tell like this is this is some nice stuff. We've got to ration this out. So the Amoravicha Midnight Renewal is one mm-hmm. of those products where I told you guys I've been doing a lot of just like one and done because it's mama ain't got no time. I'm telling, I'm recording this with no skincare. Okay. I just woke up and like, I'm not even going to tell you. Okay. I've been up for like four hours. <laughs> okay. So it's really like, I, I need this workhorse, like one and done and like just throw my body in the bed products. It's a nighttime serum that actually like, first of all, smells incredible. It feels like a real treat and it has like vitamin A in it. So you know that you're getting some you know, real reparative, you know, Work. Oh, like a vitamin A derivative, like a retinol type. It has a it has a retinol, which we oh, we've yes, talked about before. It has retinol, have indeed. And then it has um, microalgae, and it has one of their proprietary like healing concentrates, and it has all kinds of other <laughs> good things. Concentrate. But it, it's a go if you don't like like a balm to go to bed with. Listen, I don't mind going to bed with like a balm or something like thick. But it's like a light serum that has like a nice like dewy kind of like um, so it's like, like balm like kind of quality and a nice serum like feel. It's like a serum feel. It doesn't have like a bomb qual, but oh, okay. it gives you like a little bit of a glow, you know, a little bit of a glow. So you can put it on and like potter around and not feel like, you know. It turns sexily to any partner in your bed and look glowy. Kind of, yeah. <laughs> totally. Yeah. <laughs> or just like lovely. face smash into the pillow and pass out. <laughs> <laughs> you do you, people. <laughs> and live live to see another day, hopefully. <laughs> Glowier, more it's really nice. skin in the morning when you wake yes, up. Yes, yeah, but you, yeah, you feel like okay, you did something yourself for yourself, and it honestly, it smells so luxury. You know that smell. I don't like fragrance free skincare, by the way. I like to feel something. It's one hundred eighty five dollars. I just saw Stuart and Rye do a whole Instagram on this. She's like, you just take all the joy out of life when you get rid of the fragrance, and I was like, yes. Yes, I do. Yes, yes. I just don't like fragrance free skincare. I get it. If like you have um, allergies or irritation, that's totally understandable. But I want to smell something. Okay. Oh, that sounds so lovely. it's 185 and yeah, it's a treat. It's definitely, yeah, it's definitely a treat. Sometimes we need that. <laughs> Some, sometimes. <laughs> that is a perfect product to get your beauty sleep with, Jess. Yes. So why just don't you dive in? Do that, everybody, get your beauty sleep and we'll see you on Friday. We hope you enjoyed the show. It's your reviews and feedback that help us make the podcast even better. Head over to iTunes to rate and review us or email your thoughts to info at fatmascara.com. We also want to answer your beauty questions and hear what products you love. To share a Razor One product with you or to ask a beauty question, email us at info at fatmascara. 
If you send it as a voice memo file, we can even share your voice on the podcast. You can also do that by leaving us a voice message. Our phone number in the United States is 646-481-8182. Thanks so much for listening. 